Hey, how's it going guys? Welcome to another PyQt5 tutorial video. My name is Jay. In this video, we're going to learn how to implement a validator to limit what user can type. So a good use case for this feature is when you want to create a data entry form and for some of the fields such as age, telephone number, name fields, you want to ensure that user entering the correct uh, information and data type. So here, let me just give you a quick demo on how this feature works. So from this window, I have two uh, widgets. On the top is a uh, input field, which is created using Qline edits. And on the bottom is a uh, text field. So let's say on the top, I only want users to enter uh, numerical values, such as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So here I can type 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And since I implement the uh, value data to only allows digits to be entered, if I try to type letters, for example, A, B, C, the input field won't accept the, the input. For the uh, text field, we're doing the reverse. So here we can type letters, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. But if I try to enter digits, such as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, now I won't be able to. So that's the feature that we're going to build uh, in this demo. First, I'm going to import the libraries. So let me make the fonts a little bit bigger. All right. From the PyQt5.qt widgets module, I'm going to import Q application, Q widgets, Q line edits. Uh, for the text field, let's use Q plain uh, text edit. And for the layout, I'm going to use uh, Q feed box layout. In terms of implementing the validation uh, feature from the PyQt5.qt core module. I'm going to import the QRexp uh, class. So this is basically the uh, regular expression class. And from the Qt GUI module, I want to import the QRexp validator class. Now here let me create my uh, Q application instance. And I'll create my demo class, app demo. And I'm going to pass the Q widget class as the parent class. And let's set the window size to 1200 by 800. And here I'll, I'll create my uh, layout object and set layout. And here I'll create my validator instance. So I'll take the QRIG uh, EXP validator class and I'll pass the QRIG EXP class. And inside this class is going to accept the, uh, the rig expression uh, pattern. If you have never used a regular expression before, regular expression is basically a sequence of characters that defines a search pattern. In this case, it will be really, really uh, beneficial if you already know a little bit about how to use regular expression. But if not, um, here, let me just give you uh, a demo. So for example, uh, I want to uh, implement the validator only allows digits to be entered in my input field. So here I want to use a uh, square bracket to indicating uh, the pattern. So it's going to be from digit 0 to 9 and close bracket. And I'll insert a plus symbol to indicating that I can repeatedly use the same uh, pattern. And that's it. Now here let's create our input field. I'll be using Qline edit class to uh, create our input field widgets. Let's go ahead and set the style sheet. I'll set the font size to uh, 30 pixels. And for the height, let's do 50 uh, pixels. And for the font color, let's do, let's use blue. And from the line edit object, there's a method called set validator. Here we want to provide the validator object. Now if I add the 
the widgets to my main layout. Now let's launch the application and let's just test it out real quick. Oh, here I forgot one thing. So here I forgot to create my uh, my app demo instance. I'll name the instance demo. Oh, it should be app demo. And here I'm getting the unknown property called. That's okay. Now here's my input field, and I can uh, enter in the digit uh, values. But if I try to enter letters, this input field won't accept any letters. Now let me close this and let me fix the um, the CSS. All right. For the uh, text field, the uh, plain text field. So I'll create a class to to service the Q plain text edit uh, class. I'll call this class uh, text edits, and we're going to pass Q plain text edit class as the parent class. And this time, I'm going to implement the regular expression pattern inside the class. And I'll call this uh, pattern reg exp. And to only allow letters, so here we want to insert a square bracket. And in the beginning, we want to insert the caret symbol. The caret symbol represents that I want to apply my pattern from the beginning of the text. So here I want to uh, match just the letters. So here I want to provide letters from A to C. And since the pattern is case sensitive, so I only want to provide the uh, uppercase A to, A to C as well. And it's going to be a wildcard pattern, so I'm going to insert the wildcard symbol. And lastly, I'm going to insert the dollar symbol to uh, indicating this is the end of the pattern. Now I have the uh, regular expression pattern created. We can now apply that to the uh, text edit class validator uh, setting. So here I'm going to set the validator uh, attribute. I'll pass the QRIG. EXP validator class, I'll provide my regular expression object. And that's it. Oh, and one more thing, we need to uh, implement the key press event. And the reason being is because right now we're just creating the attributes. We're not doing anything with uh, these two attributes. So that's why when we, uh, if we want to uh, have any effects when it comes to applying those two attributes, we need to uh, apply those attributes to some sort of events. In this case, will be the key press events. So here I'm going to grab the, the validator uh, events first. So I'm going to uh, use the self.validatorObject.validate. And here I'll pass the, uh, the events.txt. I only want to grab the first character. Now I'm going to say that uh, if state, which is the the first uh, which is the first item, so let me do this. Let me just print the the state object, so you know what the state object looks like. Oh, and let me go back. So let me add the the uh, plan edits uh, class to my window. And I'll call the instance self dot text edits. Is equals to text edit. And I'll set the style sheet. And I'll set the font size to 30 pixels as well. Now let me launch the window. So we have the, the input field. Now if I go to the uh, text edit field, if I type a number, for my terminal, it's showing 0, 1, and 1. Actually, that's not a good example. Let me insert a letter. The first element indicating whether or not the um, failed data pass. So 0 means fail, and 2 means pass. And the second element is the, uh, is the, the character. 
and the third element meaning that whether or not if the value is accept. Now let's go back to uh, our application. So given the, the state value, and we can use that to validate our entry. So here I'm going to say that uh, if the first element value uh, equals to 2, so here we, I can use the curate exp validator class that acceptable uh, value. And this actually returns as 2. Or oh, if it stays uh, 1, it's in. So these are just special characters indicating if I'm pressing enter keys or uh, delete keys. And since those keys require special handling. So for the backspace, it will be uh, backward slash x08. And for the enter key, it will be backward slash r. So if this condition passed, then I want to just return to the original state. And that's it. And I'll uh, delete this line right here. Now let's give it a try. So if I launch my application, and here, let me see. Oh, and here I forgot the, the colon. Now let me try again. Right, so on the top, we have our input field. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Actually, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And if I try to enter a letter, and it won't let me enter any letter. Now if I go to the text field, if I try to enter any digits, and it won't let me uh, input any digits. But if I try to uh, type hello world, and here it's going to recognize that I'm entering uh, letters. And because I, I didn't add space key to my this statement right here, so when I press uh, space key, the space key is going to get ignored. So ultimately, uh, if you want to add all the special keys, you will have to manually insert those key values uh, in this line right here. If anyone has better suggestions or better solutions, uh, please leave your uh, solution or suggestion in the comment section below. But for now, this is everything I want to share in this video, and hopefully you guys found the video useful. As always, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys on the next video.